You're listening to a Time Machine podcast. Old movie Time Machine. An adventure through time and or space. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Old Movie Time Machine. This is the show in which we use color motion picture films made in the old U.S. of A. between the years of 1945 and 1965 as windows into the past. You know the drill by now. We open the windows. We crawl through the windows. We explore what's happening in the world beyond the window. And while we do this, we ask some critical, probing questions, such as the people that we see in this world beyond the window. Who are these people? What are their habits? How are they treating each other? What decisions are they making? And why? And ultimately, the most vital of all vital questions, what are they wearing and what do their living rooms look like? And then at the end of the show, we're going to ask the most critical of all critical questions on behalf of you, the good people of the early 21st century, which is, hey, you guys, this movie that we just watched, we spent all this time, world beyond the window, so on and so forth, critical probing questions. Do we keep watching this thing? Do we keep passing this movie of all the films ever made? Do we keep passing this one down the line? To our kids and our grandkids and our great grandkids and our great great grandkids. Guys, medical science, you're going to see your great great grandkids. I'm sorry to say it, but it's true. We will find out though. But who are we, by the way? Who am I in particular? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. (laughs) Who is that girl I see? I see staring straight back That's right. at Sing me. it, sister. There we go. <laughs> when will my... I can't hit those notes, guys. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're going to leave that to Christina Aguilera. That's right. No, we can't, uh, we can't come close to that. That was just... God, no. <laughs> Despicable. Guys, listen. Hard reset. Sorry. Who am I? I'm your host through time and or space, Justin Zeppa. Joined as ever by my incredible panel of international experts at being human in the early 21st century, and also the smartest people I know. Starting on my left, you know her, you love her, you've been missing her all of January, the one and only Shrish Manaik. Hey, Shrish. Hey, guys. What's up? Welcome back to the program. Welcome to the year 2023. Whoa, I can't believe it. That seems like a made-up number, right? It does. That seems like a year that wasn't ever supposed to happen. Not like something all. was supposed to have happened before we got to that point in the count, but here we are. Here and yet here we, the show continues. It's the Roaring Twenties. We got to do more We're of these. Still processing oh, yeah. twenty twenty. That's fine. Right. It's three years later. <laughs> and the person processing over there, she's across the ocean, but she's also here in our headphones and our hearts. My sister and yours, Carolyn Nowrose. Hey, sis. Hi. Hey there. <laughs> Still processing, huh? Oh, yeah. Or We're ignoring it. I don't know. Oh, I mean, my God. It just... There's so much processing happening right now. We're processing. <laughs> We're processing. 2023. You guys, thank you so much for your patience while we took January to sort of like do a reboot on almost everything. everything yeah. Uh, but we are back. I and don't it is work on February. my birthday, okay? I don't. That's right. And I don't work on her birthday either. Uh, <laughs> it was my sister's holiday. birthday, January 20th. It's a <laughs> national holiday. All the horses celebrate, they throw a parade. Uh, except it's people who walk in a line and the horses watch. Wouldn't that be something? Carolyn? Yeah, I mean, I think they would only care if would we you had like treats, to see that? if we were dressed uh-huh. as large in like carrot costumes or something. Yes, and the horses yes. would be like, I am into this. It's a whole cadre of carrot <laughs> carrot people. People wearing carrot suits. Like a carrot dance line. Uh, or a big old, you know, white sugar cube or something mm-hmm. like that. Something mm-hmm. tasty. Some some kind of treats. Molasses cookie. Um, you guys, it's February. I would be remiss if I did not note the fact that this is a month that the greeting card industry has told us is about love. Mm. So that is going to be our running theme for this little mini arc throughout the month. But it's not just love, you guys. You know all of us. We all, for the most part, love, love. Some people a little bit more cynical about it than others. Shrish, <laughs> 
other of, of us may be too romantic for our own goods. Looking at myself in the mirror over here. <laughs> but the point is, love exists, and it existed back in the day that we are exploring. But we're not just going to explore love stories, you guys. We're going to go pack your bags. We're going abroad. We're doing love stories in Europe, everybody. Oh. Ooh. Exciting. Ah. Europe. That's okay. where the history okay. comes from. That's right. We need a little vacay, a little get away from it all, you know? Well, I was going to say, there's a, a really good Bollywood movie that we could slot into this oh, love yeah. in Europe. Which one is that? It's called An Evening in Paris. <laughs> Ooh. I mean, it does sound like it fits the, the criteria for, for what we're doing I here. that's what it's called anyway. Ooh. I probably should have researched that before I dropped it, but, you know. <laughs> before you started singing right. the theme song? Exactly. No, nah, I don't think so. I think, I think everybody's winning at this point. Okay. You guys, we're starting our adventure, though, in the year 1957. It's a little movie. We've been teasing this person, the star, for quite some time. We talk about her virtually every week. Her name is Audrey Hepburn. This movie is called Funny Face. She's a goddess. No. She is. She looks incredible. So we open with, first of all, this is a Paramount picture. Mm. And it is filmed in glorious Vista Vision. And it shows. So we've talked about these special lens processes before. Uh, high definition for the times, and you can take in a lot of uh, depth of field. You, you're getting a lot of clarity in these images. So we have some incredible sets in this movie, and the colors as well are really popping, as we are about to find out. But we open with you know a funny face, we, a, a light box where you can see um, film, translucent film prints and, you know, backlight them or whatever. And it's Audrey's face. It's just her eyes, nose and mouth. And she looks incredible. She looks stunning. And this is, these are the opening credits. Let's go to the halls of quality magazine run by Maggie Prescott, editor in chief. We have some brightly colored doors, multicolor, spectrum of color on these doors in a big old white uh, lobby area. It's all very stylized, what we're looking at right here, as she stalks her way through the hallways. Maggie Prescott. Like her? Love her? Hate her? Question mark. (sighs) What's the chick's name in um, Devil Devil Wears Prada? Meryl Streep. (laughs) Her character's name. Anna Wintour? (laughs) The character's name. I don't know the character's name. I don't know. Anyway, it's like a um, a toned down version of her. Yeah. A little bit. Yes. Esque. I, uh, I'm going to say I love her. Okay. I think she's probably, she's the funniest part of this movie, I would say. I feel like she's one of the stronger female characters we've seen. She, yes. In well, some of these movies. For sure. I mean, she's got status, right. you know, yeah. in the, in the, the workplace hierarchy. She's a powerful woman. She doesn't give a shit about what anybody thinks no. or says. And, and she has a whole bevy of ladies running behind she's her. Got a, she's got a girl gang. <laughs> And she's uh, snapping out these one-liners too, you know. She's she should also be president. I thought I already was an amazing, Ooh. an amazing performer. I mean, she really like obviously, you know, lots of years of experience. But she does it. She sings it. She dances it. She is on it. I mean, she must have been like a one-take wonder. Is all I can think. Oh sure. Uh, she, now, she, to be this fair, this woman seems to be very much a tour de force. Listen, the Tallahassee accent could have used takes two, three, <laughs> and four. Okay, oh, I mean, I think we can all agree. Drinking. Yeah, well, <laughs> she has she has another one of these voices. She has she has a cigarette voice, which mm-hmm. I, I've called out in the past. Cigarette and gin. Of yeah, exactly. It's just a certain a tonal ca- quality, a certain characteristic that you don't hear too much these days because uh, we know better. Mm. But back then, they didn't know better, or they knew better, and they just didn't give a fuck. They didn't get, they, they they, I don't think they knew in the 1950s. Mm, I think people don't have cancer. Okay. I, th- I, think, I think they had a, a pretty good Weren't they sm- still inkling. smoking in planes at this time? Absolutely. No, I mean, like, so, oh, the offboarding of smoking mm. has been a, you know, a 50-year process, right. but... I think what the Surgeon General warning came out in the early 60s, we determined. Okay. I don't know. I got to listen to our show. We have so much great information on our on our program, on so Old Movie educational. Time Machine. should listen to it sometime. Anyway, Maggie Prescott, editor-in-chief of Harper's Bazaar. Uh, I'm sorry, I mean Quality Magazine. She goes into her office, which, you guys, call me crazy, it can't be the same place. Oh. 
But is this the apartment from Rope? Mm. It's got these big old windows. I didn't pull up a, a shot of... I mean, Rope was mm, 45, I want to say. 47. Maybe 47. So it's 10 years later. This would not be the same set, but maybe part of the same design. I'm just looking at this couch, this re- very long couch with many pillows up against a large uh, series of picture windows. And I'm just getting rope vibes, you know? No, you're right. Now that you say it. So think about that. Uh, she is not happy with the latest issue of Quality Magazine. It's not the quality that they're purporting. And she bra- she calls in her girl gang, uh, of secretaries and admins and executive assistants, uh, uh, whichever one is appropriate for the times. She calls them into her office and she starts reading them the riot act about like, guys, we got to, we have to do better than this. This is not the quality that I want us to be known for. This is boring. We need a new idea. And I kind of get the feeling that she maybe does this every month. Mm. Maybe <laughs> like, it was direct. We have to reinvent everything. Absolutely, oh she God. does. Didn't we do that three weeks ago? But anyway, we have a beautiful shot of her desk here. I just wanted to zoom in on her desk because this is what we do while we travel through time through these films. Uh, we've got some pencils here for her markups. We've got some pens as well. Some pills. Last month's pills. proof of Quality Magazine looks massive. Pills? Now, see, that's funny because you're absolutely right, but I saw them and I thought, huh, candies. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they could be candy. Yeah, I mean, those look like just... green, like wintergreen oh. Tic Tacs. Give me a break. But no, you're right. They're probably pills. And we have the glass ashtray, of course. We have her Secret. magnifying glass. We have her very large scissors for cutting up uh, pictures she doesn't like. She and then, of course, we holder. have the cigarette, the glass slash lucite cigarette cigarette box and while we don't see her smoking very often in this movie she does have two spun up in there and it looks great and a little hand mirror as well so mm-hmm. she can just check her look check her style for the day anyway she is rambling about how upset she is about the issue and what they're going to do next time she glances to the side briefly catches sight of one particular hue and decides guys we need to change our minds about everything in fashion and we need to start thinking pink. And she rolls out the pink and we get a whole fucking song and dance about how much we all love pink. Can we get the scissors out for this? The, the big scissors th- that are on her desk? Like the big ones. I want to hear the, uh, the... I want to really hear the metal grinding on metal as they cut through the film for the think pink phase. But anyway, it's about how next month they're going to be talking about the color pink. Everything's pink. And uh, we get some rather well done, I would say, yeah. impressions of a magazine page come to life, you know, like a photo shoot spread come to life. So we're getting uh, this woman uh, stepping out of, I can't tell what model Impala? car. That, oh, I don't know. I made that up. It does kind of look like an Impala, but maybe it's a... Uh, doesn't matter. Anyway, it's a big, beautiful black car, and she is stepping out of it uh, beneath a big black umbrella, and she is wearing all pink, and everybody's mad for it. And then and back in the office, they painted all the multicolored doors pink, and all the girls are wearing pink, except for Maggie Prescott, who's like, I don't want to be caught dead in that shit. Right. I just set the trends, you know? I don't, I don't sit in them. And she's wearing gray, of course. But guys, as soon as we've solved the pink problem, we have... <laughs> We have another problem, which is, what do we do after the pink issue? You know, we need something new. We need something fresh. We need something that represents quality magazine. Let's call it mm, the quality woman, right? Mm, Of course. Now, Shrishma, what's your understanding of the quality woman, according to Maggie Prescott? (laughs) It's a quality woman. She, she, she uses looks, her. She 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 looks really nice. <laughs> but she uses her mind as the key thing, right? Is that what it was? Well, I think I think so, Carol. They, correct me if I'm wrong. You know, said she's uh, a quality woman is a discerning woman, and you know, like the yeah, she should use her mind, and uh, you know that's why we're just stuffing that mind with um, pink, pink, or pink you know, um, capitalistic. Uh, images that make you want to buy shit. 
Yeah, we'll never stop buying shit. I mean, right. Rule like, number hey, one, you guys, it's, it's the 50s in the United States. We're Please gonna, buy. That's right. True. We're going to make shit so attractive that you're going to be like, I need that to feel good about myself. That's right. To, to feel quality about yourself. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And here we go. So she's got, she's very excited about this idea, Maggie Prescott is. And she's very equally excited that her old pal, the very famous photographer, Dick Avery, is... Um, is shooting the alleged quality woman at his studio right now. So let's go there. Let's see how an artist like Dick Avery lives. He's got himself a pretty sick studio here, I have to say. Big old skylight. You can get natural light if you want to, but also some baffles to kind of block it out to. And uh, he's also got himself a little string quartet just kind of... Yeah, why was that? Just setting the mood, I think. I mean, you could easily have dropped a record, I guess, but... Uh, why not? If if you can afford it, found quite odd it. that he was doing a photo shoot and there were people playing the violin. Yeah, and the uh, the Mozart wasn't working. Try cool. Beethoven or whatever the line okay. is. And meanwhile, uh, what's what's the model's name? Is it is it Marilyn? Ma- I forget. Uh, I think it is Marilyn. She is not giving them what they're looking for. Not that she's not a quality woman herself, but her qualities might be different. But and then as soon as she opens her mouth, they make her sound quite. It's a Bucci. <laughs> mm. right? Make her sound quite tri-state area. <laughs> it's a Bucci. Anyway, uh, they're not getting what they want. And so Dick Avery, played by... Fred Astaire. Fred Astaire. Do you all know Fred Astaire? Oh, yes. Also first time watching this. And he's here, and he is holding it together as well as a man of his age can hold it together. Mm-hmm. Um, Carol, maybe in the background, could you find out how old Fred is in 1957? <laughs> <laughs> Grandpa age? I mean, I think he's probably got to be close to 57. Yeah, hold on. Let me see. I think he's got to be turn of the century birthday. Somewhere I think he is, there. too. Um, but he is doing, I got to say, f- so for oh, as yeah. wide as... 1899. Oh, okay. 1899. Oh. <laughs> I'm telling you, when, when you're walking the earth at the same time as uh, American Civil War veterans, you are old. You're old. <laughs> He right. died in 1987. He lived a long time. Oh, he hung in there. Yeah. 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 That's fascinating. But he is he's doing as best he can for a man of his age... Who, which he's is still 58 got moves. years old, <laughs> he's got great moves, and he's, he's moves. and he's charming. And I'll tell you, I I get the vibe from him that he knows that he's too old for this shit. Yeah, like like Fred is uh, Fred Astaire, not Dick Avery. But I mean, I I get that sense that he's like, last time I can do this. I mean, mm-hmm. this is a, it's like getting away with a bank robbery, you know? Like well, this is the last one. We're shutting it down after this. And he's very good natured about it, and he's not too creepy. Uh, maybe he is. I don't know. Let's find out. Because we're going down to the village, you guys. We got to look. How do we get Marion to look smart? We're going to surround her with books. And not just any books, but like downtown books, village books. So we got to go downtown. Earthy books. And we get a shot of Washington Square Park down in Greenwich Village. Which, when people uh, could drive through the arch. When you could drive through the arch. Uh, not unlike you can do at the uh, Arc de Triomphe in Paris today, you can still drive beneath the arch. Mm-hmm. Um, this is my old stomping grounds, uh, and had it existed at the time, you know, I would have been dipping into embryo concepts, oh. philosophy, and literature. You would have worked bookstore. There. Uh, I've, yeah, I've, I probably would have. Now, I was trying to figure out: Do you think is this backlot? I can't tell. Like. I like the look of these garbage cans. They look very legit, very beat up. These boxes are old and greasy and belong on the side of the road like this. Uh, that looks like a uh, that looks like a real city trash can. Yeah. There's like oh, b- jugs of moonshine next to it. Though, what the <laughs> fuck is happening? <laughs> and <laughs> it's so weird. And back here, I can't tell if that's a facade or not. I mean, I can't either. That's the thing. It's I can't done, tell. It's done I very can't well. tell. <laughs> it is. It is a, a complete job. If if it, if this is a backlot version of the outside of this bookstore in, in Greenwich Village, but when we get inside, I mean, we can see this is one of the incredible sets that we have here. Just a massive bookstore. Somehow, massive bookstore. I mean, you could fit an airplane in this place in this little tiny like 
if we just look back outside real quick, like, <laughs> huh? No way. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyway, it's like a they, three story book, four story bookstore. It is. Yeah, it looks like the Strand. It's amazing. Yeah. And all of these books back here, I mean, all of this shit is just popping on this Vista Vision. We're getting every detail. Mm. I mean, think about how far away this wallpaper is, and we can see what it looks like. That's amazing. Uh, it's a beautiful shot. Anyway, they burst in there, the whole crew, uh, Maggie, Dick, Marion, all of the, the girl gang are there and they're all, they're all carrying camera supplies and lights and everything. And they're just making it's themselves at home. It's, it's a bitch. Mm. And who do they meet on the inside though? But the one poor clerk who's going to have to pick up after these uh, midtown slobs and her name is Joe Stockton played by Audrey Hepburn. And she is, how would we describe her? Mousy and bookish, perhaps? Mm, Plain and bookish is what they're going for, but they cannot hide. Bookish. They cannot hide that bone structure. Well, I mean, her face, yeah, you can't hide the face. It's a it's a pretty perfect face. Now, they do try to hide the rest of her in, in burlap, it looks mm-hmm. like, a yeah, burlap yeah, dress. <laughs> and it's uh, not you attractive. Know, Everything that they're doing with her at this point, because as we find out from her character, she is herself a, a, a philosopher and a student of philosophy, and she loves working at this bookshop, and she is a believer and follower and practitioner of empathicalism, which is... Which is, uh, did they ever describe what that was? <laughs> I'm stressed, yes. It's like half the movie. Oh. Did I miss it? Yeah, you missed it. Yourself Maybe I was fast forwarding because I thought it was a song <laughs> when they were trying to explain it. <laughs> So look, the whole idea is it's based on empathy, right? Mm. So you have to put yourself in another person's shoes and try mm. to feel what they feel. And if we can all do that, the philosophy says, you know, that will put an end to, to war and mm-hmm. suffering and things like or this. Or it's just going to increase the opportunities for men to assault women because they can't take themselves out of their own shoes and are just like, pretty girl, want to kiss? Bye. Yeah. <laughs> I put myself in your place and uh, I, mean, I, I felt you like wanted you wanted kiss. me to j- delicately you. cradle your boobs. <laughs> does uh, he, does he actually what? say that? Yes, he does. Yeah, he does. That's what I'm like, and, and you know what? Professor Flostra does the exact same fucking shit. Yeah. He absolutely does. It's all a con just to start smooching. And so Dick is like, look, here's the deal. I know you you hate this shit. I get it. But you come with us. We're, go- we're going to go to Paris. You've always wanted to go to Paris. You told me at the bookshop. So you can go see your lectures at the cafe or whatever during the day. And then we shoot some film and we do a little fashion show and everybody's having a great time. So just do that. And she signs on for that. And he is... Uh, again, even though he's his grand, uh, her grandfather, he is very decent about all of this, I feel. And he does not kiss her in this scene, if I'm not mistaken. Um. To his credit, I guess. If, if that's the case, then that's to his credit. If he does kiss her, I well, we got a real kissaholic on our hands. <laughs> Sorry, I don't I know. I think there's some smooching. In the dark room? I think so. Oh, okay. Hot. Maybe. I don't know. But do we... Um, the way he was developing his photographs. Yeah. Were we okay with that? That's Is that not how you do it? I don't know. I didn't take photography. I just, in I high just school, felt so. like maybe That's some gloves did. might have been required. I don't know. And then he okay, just kind of but that is you do you you used to do the things the, in d- the, the pan different pan trays, yeah, yeah, that you yeah, would right. you would have to like move the different solutions over mm-hmm. the piece of paper. I mean, yeah, I mean that mm. that's how I'm assuming that that was all real. Like, that was live on the set. Uh, It seems like it anyway. I don't... I I mean, I don't think that they made that end... Like, does that make sense? I don't remember. No, yeah, no. The one he pulls out at the end. But, like, yes, they were doing that all on set. Maybe it was just water in those things. Who knows? Yeah, could be. Could be. Uh, Movie magic, everybody. Movie magic. But it's time for the theme of the month. We're going abroad, everybody. (sighs) Check out Paris from the sky. We've got a superimposed plane Bonjour flying over Paris. the Seine, the beautiful bridges of Paris, <laughs> and we see there's Notre Dame Cathedral pre Inferno. I was just I took a shot of this because I'm real curious as to what's happening down here. No idea. There is a a large sort of is it seating? I mean, is it, it look? It's a very large kind of angled upward 
series of platforms. I cannot explain it. We'll put it on the Instagram. You tell me what this is. It must have been for some kind of 50s uh, festival, some kind of, it, it looks like a thing where uh, royalty is arriving and would be sitting at the top or I, I don't know. It's just odd to see. Anyway, they arrive in Paris. Look at them. The, the, the trio, we've got Maggie, Dick, and Joe, and they are all looking super cute and they have arrived in Paris and they're like, oh, I'm so tired. What a, what a trip. But it's it's great to be here. But I'm gonna go right to the hotel. I think you guys and get some get some shut eye, get refreshed or whatever. But they don't do that. <laughs> Sorry, do they? I just googled what that thing was. One okay. of the other questions that's googled is what was the age gap in Funny Play- Funny Face? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> that's thirty years. Thirty uh. years. All right. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Uh, no answer immediately on what the fuck mm, that is. Okay, we'll look into it. We'll, we'll do some deep dives. <laughs> But guys, they're, they're not going back to the hotel to sleep. They're in Paris and it's daytime. Bonjour Paris. We, we follow them. Another song and dance. Uh, they're strictly tourists. And strictly uh, tourists on the Rue de la Bay. <laughs> I am okay with this song. I'm going to put Maggie's scissors yeah. down. I'm fine with this. And it's I cute. love the, the fact that we do see they are on location. They are mm-hmm. in Paris. Mm-hmm. And Paris looks great for being the 50s. I mean, again, we're only uh, 12 years outside of the war ending, and this is uh, pretty intact here, looking pretty good. Love it. Uh, at one point, Maggie runs into this platoon of American accented but French. Uh, outside the bus, Ritz. Like bus boy? Yeah. Bell okay. boys. Bell boys. And they are so helpful, and they are jazz handing their way uh, up and down the. The front of this place Trolls and pointing, the, well, where she needs to be, and just <laughs> mm-hmm. like, <laughs> and she's she's behaving as though this is entirely normal. But boy, they these fellows sure do know how to put on a show. And then they all realize that there's oh, there's something missing. There's, there's something, something missing. missing I know. <laughs> there's still one place that they've got to go. Shrishma, where where have we not seen at this point? Um, let me guess. Is it the Eiffel Tower? It's the Eiffel oh, Tower. Good. <laughs> and they all meet there and they're like, You uh, what you said that you were tired. I thought you were tired. You said you needed sleep. <laughs> sleep. And then uh, and then they go up there and they sing and Bonjour Perry, they're strictly tourists together and they're loving it. Surprise, everybody, it's me again, your favorite mid-roll host, Jay-Z, coming at you to talk about the great products that we have available for you to purchase or sign up for. In this case, I'm talking about the Boom Room. Now, you may hear some references in the free feed about this alleged Boom Room. It's our incredible museum of mid-century life and it's available on patreon and what are you gonna get when you when you sign up for this guys it's two dollars a month number one that's nothing that's almost two dollars is almost zero dollars so let's just get that right out of the way but what you're gonna get is twice the content you love the show you're hearing right now you even love this commercial but if you go to the patreon you're going ad free and you're going twice as much content. That's right. So when you listen to these free ones, you're like, oh, they left out that scene or whatever. Uh, We did not leave that scene out. We just kept it for the longer version. So the link is in the show notes. Sign up for the Boom Room. We will see you there. It's a beautiful community of beautiful people. And I think you might fit the bill. So check it out. We would appreciate it. And if you do join us over there on Patreon, $2 a month, uh, I'm going to thank you like I will right now, 2023 style. Thank you. And now back to the show. Anyway, eventually she dances herself into exhaustion and Dick walks her home to her hotel. Uh, interesting that they're not all staying at the same hotel, but there it is. Yeah. I mean, I guess we have to set a premise for these scenes. And he then, realizing the error of his ways, he starts apologizing to her in song and ask for her forgiveness. And then he does his own little song and dance number. He's we like, can cut that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Look, he does. Could we? I don't want to cut it out entirely because I will say that that's some of the finest umbrella work that you're going to see in a movie. I want to cut out the part when he starts doing the Spanish bowl. The bowl stuff. Yeah. Because w- then I'm like, okay, all right. 
Yeah. Um, real quick side tangent. It's going to be so quick, but speaking of uh, interesting um, bullfighting in cars, Carol and I watched Herbie Goes Bananas the other night. Do you remember that, that movie? <laughs> Isn't Herbie the car? Yeah, the car. Carolyn, do you remember? I can't see your face, so if you're shaking your head, no. Okay, okay, okay. So, word has come back from across the Atlantic Ocean that there is a, an internet outage in Carolyn's re- region. <sighs> come so, on, America. Come on, where's this... <laughs> Where's your... Come on! Where's the, is it Joe Biden? Come on, everybody, come on! We can do it! Dana What's Carvey's up with him? Joe, Joe Biden? What's up with Joe Biden? Yeah. Oh, dude. We, we don't have the time. <laughs> come on! It's crazy! We gotta, we gotta do this! Come on! I've gotta work on that. Anyway, uh, waiting for that infrastructure, uh, fighting Joe. Uh, whenever you're ready, get us... It, Internet. Should everybody have internet at this point? I feel like like it should be a, it's a right now. It's like a basic human right. I say that, but there are people Mm. in the world who don't have access to fresh water. You know what I mean? It's insane. What are we all doing, people? That's perspective, bro. That's perspective. That's how we do it here. So look, Carolyn has left behind explicit instructions about, you know, the process we go through at the end of the show. But meanwhile, we will continue walking our way through this uh, over here. Trishma remains. She is here in person. She does not have an excuse to leave. Sorry, we're at your oh, house. Well, no. No, I'm just kidding. Later. Later that day. Joe is chatting with locals, and she she's preparing for the big show. And she's in up in her room on the second floor, like talking to people in the courtyard. And she runs into her two. Uh, drinking buddies from the cafe that we'd seen earlier and they're like uh, scrambling to get off somewhere she's she's like wondering what's happening and she finds out that professor uh emil flostra Mm -hmm. the head of empathicalism and that philosophy is speaking at the cafe that very like right now she's like ah fuck, this is the whole reason I came over here. Look, when Dick Avery comes by, she's just like telling random neighbors, when this guy comes by, just tell him to meet me at the cafe. Floster's talking, got to be there later. And she just takes off for the cafe. He shows up again, full tuxedo this time. And she runs into her speaking with Professor Flostra, who is not an elderly gentleman, with uh, liver spotted hands, he is in fact a dashing bearded Frenchman mm-hmm. of early middle age, and he knows it. And he's using all of those qualities to land this young gamin who has come in very excited about all of his ideas. And she is also <laughs> dressed in a, one of her, the gowns that she will be displaying. So, I mean, she's they're both a little fish out of water. Her and Fred Astaire at this point. Meanwhile, Fred Astaire. Slash Dick Avery is clocking Professor Floster and is like, ah, oh, I see. You're a mover. I get it. You're a, you're a player, right? You're uh, what's what was the guy the pickup artist like Mysterio or something like that? Do you remember that guy? He wore like a top hat with a question mark. Oh, I don't know. Pickup artist, okay. nagging and all that stuff, right? Like, this is exactly what this dude is pulling. But it's it's much more artsy and philosophical in nature. Anyway, he's like, look. It's nice to have met you, but you have responsibilities. Right. Like, and uh, your responsibilities does, reflect my responsibilities. Yeah. And, like, you know, I know we're in love now and everything. Oh, by the way, they fell in love. I've, right. We didn't really mention this. They fell in love during the, the their photo shoots out at some castle where they're doing like a wedding photo shoot. And then they're night. Oh, yeah. There was a white dress scene. And then all that's that. right. Yeah. Right. It happens so quickly, though. I mean, for all the goddamn dancing, they don't spend, they don't linger on the romance too much because maybe at this point the movies figured out like, wait, Fred Astaire was born in the 19th century. (laughs) (laughs) Might be slightly Uh, awkward. Is it too late to recast? Oh, we shot half the movie. All right, fine, fine. Anyway, they go back to Duval's and they have a big old argument behind the curtain that is going to be pulled open for the big reveal of the cover of the Quality Woman. And she's just super annoyed with his jealousy and his intrusions. And he's super annoyed that she's being naive and can't tell that this dude is just trying to pick her up. And uh, anyway, shenanigans ensue, some physical comedy. Meanwhile, Maggie Prescott's like doing the big intro. They reveal 
the, the open up the curtains only to reveal the the set that they've, they've meticulously crafted for this has been destroyed. Right. And boy, they really fucked this set up they big do. time. I mean, we're looking at it right now. It was like a geyser in the middle of the stage. Yeah. Like, where's all this water coming from? Like, why did they need so much water for this set? Well, she clearly burst a pipe somewhere. I guess so. I mean, uh, she got that going. There are these like huge industrial sized fans blowing shit everywhere. Yeah. Things are collapsing. It's great chaos. It's done really well. And, uh, it's amazing that they bounce back from this at all, to be honest with you. But that was just the, that was just the premiere. The big show is the next night, right? So we get to see a little post disaster brunching with Maggie and Dick. And also just wanted to point out, uh, they're enjoying some nice brunch coffees, but also, Nice brunch Thanks ashtray as well. Mm-hmm. You know, in case you need a little morning Siggy with your coffee, get get the works moving, get things kind of loosey goosey. Great stuff. At this point, they scheme their way into Joe's messages because she's gone. She's a wall mm-hmm. yet again. She's she's yep. taken off, and so they somehow maneuver their way into her messages. Most of which come from Dick Avery. One of which comes from Professor Flostra, though, and they're like, "That's it. We got to go find her. You know, we got to go shut this this horny Frenchman down." But and it's also in this scene that she finds out that they're in love because she didn't know before. That's true. That is, that is true. I mean, well, this is all happening at breakneck right. pace, and she sort of like gives him a look, like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" Like. You, you know you were go, born. You had to bang her. Yeah, yeah. You know you were born in the 19th century, right? <laughs> <laughs> Ain't she a little young for you? Yeah, and uh, he's just sort of like, "Well, I'm that guy." And again, I want to stress that in this dynamic, this more unusual dynamic, the age gap of 30 years, uh, Fred Astaire does a pretty good job of not being too creepy about it. He mm-hmm. still comes away. Fairly likable. Obviously, he's, uh, you know, the script says he's got to smooch on her and, you know, uh, tell her what he thinks or whatever. But aside from that, like, he's pretty easy breezy, pretty cash about it. So they discover that she has gone to a meeting at the Empathicalist headquarters or something like that, like his main place. Right. And so these two, Maggie and Dick, they dress up as beatniks. And so they find themselves inside this incredible space, the Empathicalist Headquarters. It's a massive set. It is this big old house uh, with incredible, uh, I don't know, what are these, like 18-foot bookshelves or whatever, uh, and a lot of modern art on the walls. Maybe you would find some of this artwork at Brad Allen's apartment over in Pillow Talk, you know, that kind of vibe. It's a, a similar era. And they wind their way in, and it's just a smoky room filled with, again, beautiful, young, hip, artistic people sitting on the floor, engaged in talks, and probably planning on, you know, who's sleeping with who, that kind of thing. I was going to say, I'm sure there are orgies, maybe. There's got to be, right? Like, anytime this type of scene emerges, that like that that just comes along with it, you know? It's like, we're all going to be fucking, right? Right. (laughs) Um, but we'll, we'll kind of, uh, we'll dress it up with philosophy to, to make it kind of classy. I don't know. Anyway, they, uh, are invited to hang out next to a, a woman who's playing, playing some very sad music on a guitar over here. And again, this room is so smoky. I mean, just a hundred lit cigarettes at any given moment. And they, to get into the place to begin with, a very tight security. And they had to pick out a name from the guest list that the doorman, uh, foolishly left available and they decide to be a Flor- Floridian couple doing a very thick southern accents Tallahassee accents very poorly done <laughs> and then that that couple shows up later and there's all this like oh well we gotta get out of here but before then we're gonna we we see them you know hanging out and then they catch a glimpse of Joe following uh, Emil Flostra up the stairs to his private chambers and they're like, look, there she is. We got to go. We got to put a stop to this immediately. We know exactly what this guy is angling for, and she is not ready for it. And so they have to sing and dance their way up the stairs, d- doing a whole like phony beatnik <laughs> sort of like keep a cool man uh, thing. Uh, do I have any? Oh, that's right. They use a lot of. They use a lot of African-American patois. They use the term, not children, 
but chilling, chillin'. you know, like talking about chilling, talking about voodoo, that kind of thing. It's not a good look. It is. It does not cross through the barrier into the modern day. And uh, if only because, I mean, it's one thing if you're going to appropriate it with respect, but like eh, that ain't here. You're not. You're not going to find that here. And so while while they may enjoy freaky fifties uh, beat jazz, they don't do it terribly well. That being said, they do make their way upstairs to Professor Flostra's up oh, there. The stairs, of course. I mean, look at Fred Astaire doing his little rubber Dance, leg thing does. and dancing, and all these people on their their sofa, uh, their cushions, and oh my goodness, it's a crazy scene. But we go upstairs to this office. This office is is killer, right? We've got. Old wooden chess set, wall to wall leather bound books. We've got a massive fireplace. We've got sculpture, objet up the yin yang. We've probably got yin yangs. <laughs> um, anyway, there he is keeping it cozy on the floor with her by the fire when they burst in. And Dick throws a guitar at him and kind of like knocks him over the sofa. Again, just another view of. Some fabulous modern artwork here. Mm. This is a great little office that he's got. I get it. I get the appeal of empathicalism if this is where it takes you. And More like culty vibes going on here. It's kind of culty a little bit. It's a little culty. A little bit. I mean, it's a cult of personality, I guess, if they're so into Flostra. I mean, but there's always these sort of, I don't know, beacon characters, I guess, mm. in this type of scene. But anyway, uh, meanwhile, Joe is like, what the fuck are you guys doing here? I'm hanging out with my new friend. We're talking philosophy. He is definitely not going to try, try to put his tongue in my mouth. Um, get out of here. Let me take care of him. And so they're like, well, I guess that's it. Uh, you know, we did everything we could. Right. So fuck it. And Dick is basically like, I'm hopping a plane to New York tonight. Uh, this has been great, but I'll see you when you all get back. I mean, train wreck. Sorry about that. I got to get out of here. I can't deal with this anymore. And Maggie's about to throw in the towel. But meanwhile, Joe is comforting Professor Flostra, who is enjoying this comfort, mm. maybe a little bit too much. Because as soon as they're gone, he's like, All right, now why don't you cozy up here? Why don't you kind of tuck yourself in here and uh, let me philosophize with my mouth on top of your mouth and just see where this philosophizing goes. And she is outraged. And eventually smashes him over the head with a bit of his own objet just to get out of there. So she returns back to Duval's where Maggie's about to just uh, pull the plug on the entire affair. But because she shows up, they're like, great, she's here. Put her in these clothes. Thank you so much for showing up. And she's like, she oh. She does the show, right? She does the show. But she's like, but before she does, she's like, Maggie, I've made a terrible mistake. Where's Dick? I have to tell him. I'm so sorry. And she's like, well, you fucked off to New York. I mean, you treated him like dirt, sister. So I don't know. We'll try to find him. You do the show. So while she's out there parading, doing different outfits and everything, we watch as Dick Avery makes his way through uh, the airport at the desk and then out to the tarmac. Because again, this is an age where we're just climbing onto planes <laughs> old school. <laughs> And each time he misses the PA announcement requesting he, he go to the desk to uh, answer the phone call from Maggie, who is trying to to uh, flag him down. And as he's on the tarmac, he runs into Professor Flostra, who is apparently, I mean, the timing is bizarre yeah. on this, you guys, but apparently he's really booking it to get out of Paris now that he's been clocked over the head. He's got a big old cartoony bandage on his noggin and he explains the whole thing to Dick Avery who is like, Oh, oh shit. she figured it out. And so he leaves and he runs off to Duval's, but the plane still takes off and she Joe, sees it. Take, yeah. Joe yeah. watches it take right. off. How she knows that that's the plane going from I mean, Paris to New York. Be, they, I guess at that time, there were only so many planes. I guess. Yeah, I guess so. If she knew the timing, maybe right? that would be a thing. I don't know. But she's very sad about this. And she goes out and she finishes the fashion show mm -hmm. in the very same wedding gown that she was wearing when they fell in love. And uh, a tear trickles down her face. And it's very sad. But you know what? It's not that sad because who should show up but Dick Avery? He's a solid dude. And he's like, hey, I got to find this woman again. Mm -hmm. So she runs off. Again, she's always running off this one. 
She runs off to the place where they fell in love, the old castle in the countryside. Uh, Dick Avery shows up back at Duval's. Maggie's like, well, you missed her. She's fucked off. And so, look, you're all empathicalists now. So all you have to do is put yourself in her place. Where would she be? And he figures it out and meets her over at the old castle. And they sing a reprise of their very boring wedding song, which was so boring that <laughs> I cut it out from even talking about it in this episode but i would definitely snip it out with those big Isn't old prescott scissors <laughs> it's, it's i mean borderline we're there Might it's well. it's wonderful it's marvelous all this shit and so we can cut that right out but the reprise is nice and they're back together and they're in love and so concludes 1957's funny face all right there it is this is our first audrey that's great we've done it amazing First Audrey in color. Uh, she looks outstanding. But what about this movie, Shrishma? Huh. Now, here's what you know what we do. We do we do some business at the end. This movie that we just watched, yes. Shrishma Nike, mm. Funny Face, 1957, Fred Astaire, <sighs> Audrey Hepburn. Do we keep watching this thing? Right. I was kind of torn yeah. because I really like some of the scenes. I think the photography and the pictures were really well done. Yeah. The fashion was amazing. Mm -hmm. I just, I don't know. It just feels like more of the same from before. Like, I'm sure all of them are going to be <laughs> yeah, just yeah, like yeah. this. Yep. Um, can we keep the, the fashion <laughs> and then just do away with the movie? I feel like this is going to... Did we not do this for White Christmas where it's like you could... We all kept it. But we right. also wanted edits, right? Like right. some hard Maybe edits. Maybe we can do some hard. Maybe we could do a recasting. Because this movie, a recasting? Oh, for the lead. The man? Right. the for man, Fred Astaire. <sighs> or maybe yeah. not. I don't know. Um, or, I mean, because they really, I mean, not much physical happens between nothing, them. No, that's true. There was a very high creep vibe throughout this movie that I just couldn't shake. Because of the age gap. And even the age gap and... Um, even the other guy was kind of creepy too. Oh, Floss, like yeah, yeah, yeah. Of and they're all just kind of like preying on this poor little. Yeah, girl. she's a little little uh, doe in the woods, you know. She's she's just oh. there. She's so fragile, and um, I don't know. I okay, I'm gonna have to say no. We're not keeping it, right? Okay, sorry. Fair. <laughs> well, I don't apologize to me. Hey. Apologize to Stanley Donnan, right? And to Audrey, of course. Right. Fair enough. Now look, Carolyn has texted in. And she says, look, I'm keeping the movie. So it's a yes from her. Okay. Okay. Catherine Sherlock, did she say yes she or no? She did not say yes or no. Okay. Okay. Curious. We'll have to check back in with her about that. I'm going to say this is a reluctant yes. Mm. It's too much singing and dancing, right? Okay. Cut out half these songs. Cut out most of these songs for fuck's sake that's forever yes. if we can compress this this was what like an hour 48 mm -hmm. for something like that right. i think it was yeah if we can cut 20 minutes of this movie we got ourselves a rock solid 50s classic i think okay because she looks great this she is the, great she, yeah you know and she is like performs great too keep talking about her looks of course this is because you know the name right. is funny face right but she's also a good actor yes. i think and is very uh charismatic very charming so for that alone gotta have her i would say otherwise it's a keeper because you know paris looks great it's this is the best version of this type of movie okay. that i've seen okay. so far i understand so it's a yes from me i guess it passes because it's a two to one Catherine's sure. verdict's still out brindis will maybe never see this <laughs> <laughs> but i have a feeling from what i know about her it's probably a no from her. Okay. Look, I don't, I'm not going to speak for anybody, right. though. You all come on. You tell us what you think. And that's it for Funny Face. Funny Face is in the books, everybody. All right. Well, one more time. Why not? Why 2023. Not? We love her. Funny Face. Now, next week. Mm. It's still February. It is. It's still a month of romance and a romance abroad, which means that we are going to be on another travel adventure. I mean, it's winter. It's a great time to travel, right? Absolutely. Kick us the fuck out of here. Again, we do this in Iceland, people. And, and it's, it's dark. It's dark and it's fucking cold. It is cold. It's You missed the cold shit when so you were in right, India. So right here. It, oh, it was brutal. <laughs> so, look. Next week, we are talking 1963's 
in the cool of the day. Mm. After he mends a marital rift between a vacationing young couple, the bored, fragile wife falls hopelessly in love with the husband's ex-colleague oh. who is married to a long-suffering and emotionally and physically scarred woman. Oh. oh. The couple soon run off to Greece together to pursue the romance. So there you go. There's the travel. We're going to Greece going next to Greece. week. Okay. Robert Stevens film starring Peter Finch, Jane Fonda, and our dear departed, rest in power, Angela Lansbury. Oh. Interesting. Interesting. Uh, I've never seen this film, so okay. I'm looking forward to checking this out. This will be a new one for me. I have also not ever seen this film. Okay. okay. <laughs> it's great to know. It's great knowledge to know. Shrishma, thank you so much for hanging in here. You're welcome. And your Wi-Fi not shutting down. Of course. I mean, we are in your house, of course. My sister, Carol Nowrose, of course, on her behalf, we say thank you. And uh, sis, uh, love you. <laughs> I'm your brother. <laughs> of course I love you. Why wouldn't I? Thank her so much. And of course, our other co-hosts, Brindis and Catherine Sherlock, will be back in circulation soon enough. But meanwhile, welcome to 2023, you guys. Thank you so much for listening. And I'm going to just chuck it over to me in the future. Take it away, fella. Thank you so much, me from the past. There it is. There it is. The first episode of a new year. Funny face. Great job, team. Great job, listener, for making it this far. If you have any comments about this episode or this movie or our comments about the movie, please write to us. It's partyline at oldmovietimemachine.com. We would love to hear from you. And as for next week, we are watching In the Cool of the Day from 1963. Now, lucky you guys, you can get caught up with the cool of the day before the episode drops next week you can go online and you can find it to watch it it is available in glorious standard definition to rent or buy at the following places apple tv amazon google play youtube and of course who could forget never forget you guys voodoo so check out Cool of the Day, and we will see you here next Wednesday. And until next time, you guys, also never forget that this has been Old Movie Time Machine. <laughs> <laughs>